Hello, my name is Moshe and I'm part of Netivia staff uh, serving the Jewish community here in the Jerusalem area. And today I'm here to talk about an important season in the Jewish calendar, the month of Elul. Ani le dodi ve dodi li. I belong to my beloved and my beloved belongs to me. This phrase from Song of Songs epitomizes the month we are starting. Elul is the last month of the Jewish calendar. It comes just before the period called the Yamim Noraim, the time between the high holidays, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and as such is a time of introspection, repentance, self-evaluation. During Elul, uh, Jewish people traditionally uh, increase their prayers, and they also engage in other spiritual practices, just for example, uh, studying the Bible, fasting, uh, giving to charity. Uh, the shofar is also blown during the whole month to wake up people and to remind them uh, of their need uh, for changes in their lives. The month of Elul is a time of great spiritual opportunity. It's a time of getting closer to God and preparing ourselves for the coming judgment. The idea is to reflect on the past year and take the right decisions, making changes in our lives so that we can be more in line with God's will. Why? Because it's also a time to ask God's forgiveness, to renew our commitment to living a holy life, just in time for Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And now, I want to talk with our Christian audience that I know is seeing this video. You also should take this season seriously. I know, when considering what we received in Yeshua, it looks sometimes unnecessary to obey and keep this commandment. That's okay. But let's think about it for a moment. You see, I'm not forgetting Yeshua's sacrifice when I obey this Jewish custom. On the contrary, I'm giving it the value it deserves. After all, God has to send His own Son to pay for our collective sins. And when we reflect on our lives and we seek holiness, we are just acting accordingly. The Spirit was sent exactly to do that, to help us repent and to live a holy life. He was sent to teach us how to be perfect disciples of the Messiah and give others a good example to follow. So, God wants us to repent, to turn from our sins, and to live holy lives. He appointed this time in the scriptures so we can focus our attention on the subject. So, you see, there is no better season to pray and ask God's forgiveness. There is no better season to renew our commitment to follow Jesus. This is exactly the time to do it. But let's remember that Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are also a time for collective repentance. Perhaps we already live a godly life with lots of prayers and a lot of uh, good deeds to prove it. But think now about that cousin or that neighbor of yours. He didn't decide yet on following uh, Jesus. Think about the difference Yeshua would make in your family, for example. For many people, this year is probably the last chance they will have for salvation. Many won't finish the year alive. Can you live with this sorrow? Seeing people going to hell because you never prayed for them, or because uh, you never shared the news of Yeshua with them? Can you imagine your grief and your responsibility? God does not want anyone to perish without hope. And that's your job, sharing Yeshua with friends and family. In order to help us uh, prepare for the new year during Elul, I listed some specific things that we can do this month. Okay? First of all, read your Bible. Pray. 
We need connection with God. And this is basic, my friends. If you don't read your Bible and you don't pray, you cannot call yourself a believer. We have to do it, even if we need help or guidance to do it. Spend time in silence and reflection. Prayer is important, but we also need a time to hear God's answer. Just sit quietly in His presence and listen to Him. You will be amazed on how often He answers our prayers. Another thing, visit the sick and the elderly. Not as buying your way into heaven. No, that's not my point. But do it uh, to connect and to feel empathy. This is how we can exercise uh, on being human, on softening our hearts. We can also visit, for example, friends and family and offer them support to visit them, to stay with them. Another important thing. Forgive someone who has wronged you. Forgiveness is key to a healthy relationship with God. Do not forget that in our Lord's Prayer, He says, He will forgive us in the same measure we forgive others. And oh boy, we have wronged a lot of people last year. And finally, make a commitment to change. This season can give us the, th the strength and the motivation we need to change bad habits. If we don't try, how can we improve ourselves in holiness? How can we ask God for help without committing ourselves to change? I think you understand that. But in order to help us, I'd like to share with you two verses from the Bible that I think can help us focus uh, during the month of Elul. From 2 Chronicles 7, 14, I see there an important example. It's written there. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then and only then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. That's important. Another verse, now from the New Testament, book of James 5.16. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. We need this healing from the heavens. Let us use the month of Elul to humble ourselves before God and to pray for our forgiveness. But not only for ourselves, but that others can also turn from their wicked ways. Let's use the month of Elul to seek God's grace for us, for our loved ones and the people around us. May God bless you. Blessings from Zion.